YouTube, what's up? Back again for another daily fishing video here on Andrew Upshaw Fishing. Today, we're going to talk about how you should deal with cold fronts. I can't tell you how many times on a Friday, I was getting ready to go fish a tournament on Saturday, and we had a massive cold front roll in, and it changed everything. You know, the temperatures went from 70 to the 30s, or maybe even colder sometimes. The wind changed directions to the north, the waves got big and it stayed overcast. And the next morning while I woke up, I had to go fish in those conditions. And that can be extremely intimidating for certain places that you go. And I know that I've been a lot of places in this country and I've dealt with a lot of different cold fronts. And I don't want you to get the cold front blues. So today we're going to break down a few different regions. How I would adjust if I was in that particular region dealing with that particular cold front. And hopefully you'll learn a little bit about how to adjust during those days but hey real fast though if you haven't subscribed to my youtube channel do that it makes it super easy and do me a favor comment below what state you're from and how you would adjust in these cold front situations because we all deal with it a little bit different and i always learn from you guys so if you could comment that below it would help me and i'm going to try to help you in this video so let's break it down guys so you have a lot of different regions out there you have uh, you know, obviously you have lakes that have a lot of grass, you have lakes with a lot of rock, clay, and, and you have different states that kind of deal with weather differently depending on humidity um, and things like that. So the first one I'm going to talk about is grass. You know, obviously I'm in East Texas and we deal with a lot of pre-frontal conditions, especially when these fish are transitioning from the winter to pre-spawn to spawn situations. So you know, we had a gorgeous day yesterday. It was 70 degrees. It's beautiful outside. And this morning when I woke up, it's 30 degrees. The wind was blowing out of the north, and the fishing, I promise you, has changed immensely. Now, when I'm dealing with a grass lake, like a Gunnersville, a Rayburn, uh, a Toledo Bend when it had grass, and I'm dealing with these lakes that, that are in Texas, Alabama, throughout the south, there's one thing that I've learned over the years that if there's grass, this is the one thing I have to lock in my hands. And that is a red-eyed shad. A red one at that. You know, you can throw a lot of different colors when the fishing is good. And what I mean by that is when it's nice and warm outside, you can throw golds and silvers and, and reds and sartreuse and all these other color patterns that you could ever think of. But day in and day out, if I'm dealing with a cold front, and I mean like I'm in the middle of the cold front, the weather just changed. One thing I've learned is I need to lock this bait in my hands if there's grass around. Now you're gonna say, well, aren't the fish deep? You know, aren't, aren't can't you go catch them out deep? Well, yes, 100% you can. But let me give you a scenario. Let's just say, for instance, I'm on Toledo Bend and I have a north wind that's blowing 20 to 25 miles an hour. Well, my favorite deep spots on this lake, especially in that winter to pre-spawn transition, are out in the middle of the lake. You aren't going to go fish those places. Like, that is not something you're going to be able to do. Yeah, you can go out there and try, but you're not going to go out there and catch anything. And so what I've learned is to disregard that offshore stuff when these uh, nasty fronts come in, when that water temperature is going to drop overnight, and when that weather changes. That's when I locked out that lipless crankbait in my hand and I see a lot more success with it. And it definitely seems to work in those situations. Well now, a lot of you are gonna say, well Andrew, I don't have grass at my lake. What do I need to do? Well, I'm gonna give you a couple scenarios that help you in your region. So let's just go a little further north. Let's go to, let's say Oklahoma, Arkansas, Kentucky, some of these places that are still truly in their winter uh, fishing. You know, the fish might have started migrating up a little bit, but they still kind of are in that wintertime uh, transition. There's two baits that come to mind, and, and this is, I've used it a lot over the years, and that is a, a suspending jerk bait and an umbrella rig. These are the two baits I'm going to have on this time of year. Now, granted, if you're on a lake like Table Rock and maybe those fish are still in 60 to 70 foot, you know, 50 foot down, whatever, you're not going to catch them so much on the jerk bait and umbrella rig. And you're going to have to use a spoon, uh, you know, whatever it may be, a spoon, a, a tail spinner, a jig and wrap, something like that, something that you can fish vertically. But in the sense of if those fish have started to move up, and that's what we're talking about here is that pre-spawn transition, 
if those fish have started to move up, that's when I'm going to the suspended jerkbait. Now, I want you to notice something here. This particular jerkbait has a longer bill on it, and that is chosen for a reason. In these cold front situations where the front has changed the weather, the, the temps have dropped, the wind has increased, I want the deeper diving jerkbait. And the reason is, is because a lot of times, even in really clear water, the draw factor of a jerkbait just isn't enough in a shallower diving jerkbait when that cold front rolls in. The deeper diving jerkbait is going to put the, fit, the, the bait more to where the fish are actually sitting. Uh, so they don't have to move as far to come eat it. You know, a lot of times, especially in those warmer days, you can get away with a shallower lip jerkbait because those fish will move 10, 15 feet just to come eat the jerkbait, especially in really clear water. But by putting that particular jerkbait in their area, it's more likely for them just to turn and eat it, and you're going to catch a lot more fish. Now, another thing I want you to notice here is the color pattern. So this is just natural shad. But the thing about this particular color pattern is I don't want, especially on a day like today where it's cloudy, really windy, I don't want my chrome color baits right now. You know, typically I'm using silver Tennessee shad, which has the orange belly, green back, silver sides. But on those cloudy days, I don't like chromes as much. I want something that's more of a solid color. So natural shad, sexy shad, sartreuse shad, something that's whiter, uh, that's not transparent, tends to work better for me on these particular days. I feel like they can see the bait better. One little trick that I'll tell you is when you're throwing your jerk bait in the water, throw it out there and watch it. So if you're in clear water, get in a calm section and, and pull your jerk bait under the water. If you can't see that jerk bait, you don't need to throw that jerk bait. You need to be able, when you jerk it around under, right underneath the surface, you need to be able to see the color of the jerk bait. If you can see it, the bass can see it better too. I promise you this tip has worked for me for years. Uh, day in and day out, you can do that and you will catch a lot of bass. Well, you know, the thing is, is I'm talking about rocky lakes in this situation, ones that have steeper banks and maybe some clearer water. But if you head out east a little further, I'm saying like the Carolinas, Georgia, uh, even in some parts of Alabama, you're going to deal with a lot more clay. You're going to deal with a lot more uh, herring eating fish or fish are eating crawdads. And that's when I kind of change it up on these cold front days. One bait that has always shined for me in these particular situations is a number five uh, shad wrap. You know, I've thrown a couple different colors, whether it's orange uh, crawfish or this crawdad color. Red is another great color. But once again, just like the red-eyed shad in on uh, grass lakes like Rayburn, Gunnersville, Toledo Bend, I got to lock this bait in my hand. You know, I'm going to fish transitions, maybe where rock and clay transition maybe a, a channel swing where it transitions from flat to steep or in certain situations clay points clay turns where the bait the bank is steeper on this particular clay bank than it is on the other side and i'm locking this bait in my hand i'm fishing on a spinning rod six pound test and i'm getting this bait as deep as i can and fishing these transitions if you fish enough transitions during the day you're going to get a lot of bites one thing that i do on these uh, especially on the shad wrap is i change the hooks uh, what I've learned on this particular uh, shad wrap is I still need a number six hook, but I'm going to the Aaron Martin's finesse hook, uh, treble hook. That particular treble hook is killer on this rig. Uh, it just sticks them better. I think I have better results with it. So if you do get in that situation, make sure you change your hooks, guys. When you're talking about small little treble hooks, that size six Aaron Martin's treble hook, I can't tell you enough that it is the hook to have. One thing I've always noticed on these shatter up fish uh, is a lot of times they come up behind it and they're just grabbing the tail end of it because they're so lethargic. And this is one of those situations where it's kind of a 50-50 bait. If you do hook one, you might lose it. And if you do, you just got to shake it off and go to the next fish. The cool thing about this bait, though, is you're going to get a lot of bites on it a lot of times. And that will get you, uh, you know, you, it, it allows for a little more error, I would say. So if you do lose one or two, you can make up for it sometimes with this particular bait. Now, if we go a little further south in the Carolinas, you know, you kind of get out of the, the clay and you get down more to grass to Florida, and more in particular Florida. When it comes to cold fronts in Florida, there's truly only one thing to do in my mind, and that is to pick up a big weight, big line, but a small bait. You heard that right. You know, I'm going to start flipping extremely heavy cover. Now, traditionally, 
one bait that I would always use just punching on a regular day would be a rage bug. You know, this is a, a bait that I am extremely confident in when I get in a punching situation. But when that cold front rolls in, I have to go back to one particular bait, and that is the BB Cricket. Uh, I'll show a picture of the BB Cricket here. You can kind of see it has no tail. It has no action to the bait at, so, at all. So it's definitely really weird looking, but it's so particular of a situation where you have to use it. The BB Cricket is streamlined, no action whatsoever. And I think that's exactly what you need in that particular situation is a bait with almost no action and a very compact size. You're talking about a fish that lives in less than three foot of water, four foot of water year round. So when you have this massive change in, in temperature and we deal with it, especially this time of year in Florida, where you go from really hot, like 70, 80s to the 30s, those fish go in shock. You can't have a bait that has too much action. Now, one bait that I haven't had uh, the chance to use yet, but I absolutely know it's going to work in this situation, is the new mid-size Rage Bug. It's a little bit smaller, but not so small that you can't put a big flipping hook in it, and it's still thick enough that you can put that flipping hook in there. And that's one thing. We had the Baby Rage Call, or Baby Rage Bug. And I don't know if you've seen it, but it's really small. It's not thick enough to put the uh, the big hook in, so you can't really flip it as good. you got to have a thicker bait, but compact in size. And I think that's where that new mid-size rage bug is going to be killer in that situation in Florida. Now, we've talked about a couple different situations. We've talked about rock, clay, grass, uh, deep, clear water. Now, one thing you can still do, you can still fish deep this time of year, you know, especially in these cold front situations, but there's only a couple of baits that I'm going to recommend. Uh, you, you can leave a lot of things at home in this situation. You don't need uh, just to bring 20 rods. I typically pick up two rods if I'm dealing with a, a extreme wind, high, uh, you know, cloudy conditions, that kind of stuff. I'm picking up a football jig, uh, whether it's a half or three quarter, uh, green pumpkin, brown, anything like that. Rage Menace is what I'm using this time of year. I want something with minimal action. I don't want something that's going to be flapping back there a lot. Uh, and I trim the skirt out a lot. As you can tell, this the skirt's trimmed out considerably. This is how I do it this time of year. The other bait is a drop shot. I literally lock those two baits in my hands if I'm going to have to fish deep. I'm not going to crank right now on these, these cold front days. Cranking out deep just doesn't work for me. Now, it might work for you. And maybe you comment below and say, hey, man, you're an idiot. You should be cranking this bait in this situation. But in my experience, if I'm still going to fish deep, those are the two baits I'm locking in my hand. I'm locking in a quarter ounce weight on a drop shot with a dream shot on it. Typically, in either morning daughter, dawn or, more, uh, or brown purple or margarita mutilator as far as a robo worm color or a green pumpkin or brown jig. And I'm fishing these channel swings, these transitions where I feel like these fish are starting to funnel into these spawning areas or maybe leaving their winter haunts to move into these places. So guys, that's a breakdown of a couple different areas across the country and how you should deal today with these cold front changing conditions. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you can, leave me a like, comment below, do all those fun things. I really appreciate you watching this video and I'll see you on the next one.